In this video I want to show you how to get started with the WatchGuard Firebox as a cloud managed device. This tutorial assumes that you have already registered the device to your WatchGuard account. We will add the device to WatchGuard Cloud, go through the Firebox web setup wizard, then finally review some important basic settings. Why choose cloud management if there is also local management available? Well, though the software based WatchGuard system manager has existed for many years, WatchGuard Cloud is browser based and provides a more simplified interface and terminology with the addition of more features over time. You can manage more than one Firebox from a single UI with no need to connect to each Firebox directly and no need to install a local management server for multibox management. You can apply multiple changes with a single save, whereas Fireware Web UI requires you to save each change. You can schedule deployments where you would again need a local management server to perform the same task. A big advantage is the deployment history for each cloud managed device, giving you the opportunity to compare configurations and to revert to a configuration from the corresponding list of configurations for the Firebox. Remember that cloud management is incompatible with local management tools such as the WatchGuard System Manager. Fireware Web UI and the command line interface provide limited options. Ready for WatchGuard Cloud? Let's go! When we log into WatchGuard Cloud, we find ourselves on the dashboard. As we want to add a device, we go to Configure and then Devices. We can see a locally managed Firebox that we can also connect to WatchGuard Cloud and take advantages of logging, reporting, threat sync and perform certain administrative tasks. So let us click on Add Device. Here you will see any registered or allocated devices on your account. If you do not see any devices listed here, verify the device is registered to the account you are logged into or if you are a WatchGuard partner, verify your device allocations. When you add a Firebox V to WatchGuard Cloud as cloud managed, the steps look a little different, but they are also easy. Further information is available from the WatchGuard Help Center and searching for add a Firebox V to WatchGuard Cloud in brackets cloud managed. Click on either the name of the device or on the icon on the right hand side. A wizard starts to guide us to add this device. In the device management drop down list, we select cloud management and click next. Here we specify the device name and choose the correct time zone in which the device is operating in. Then click next. We now must set up the external network for the firebox and configure the external interface zero. Available options are PPPoE, DHCP or static. In this example, we will use static and set an IP address, a default gateway and a public DNS server. When done, click next. Here we add a strong status and admin password, something between 8 and 32 characters. I would recommend using at least 16 characters. And as you might have guessed, click next. With this completed, the device is now added as a cloud managed device in WatchGuard Cloud. According to the instructions that show which are also available in the WatchGuard Help Center, we are ready to connect the device to WatchGuard Cloud. You must connect Firebox Interface 0 to a network with reliable internet access. The steps to set up and connect the Firebox depend on how the Firebox gets an IP address for the external interface. If the Firebox can use DHCP to get an IP address on Interface 0, start the device with factory default settings. The Firebox automatically tries to connect to WatchGuard Cloud to download a configuration. If the download fails for any reason or DHCP is not an option, do not worry, it is time to use the web setup wizard. Connect your computer to Firebox Interface 1 and your computer should receive an IP address from DHCP. Open a web browser and go to 10.0.1.1 with HTTPS on port 8080 and log in with the username admin and the passphrase readwrite. Select Cloud Management, accept the user license agreement and click Next. The device is already added and we want to continue. Under Connection Settings, we need to configure the external network settings that are required for the Firebox to connect to the Internet. In our example, we use a static IP address. We specify the IP address and gateway and click Next. The Firebox needs a DNS server IP address entry and click Next. The configuration is applied to the Firebox, it connects to WatchGuard Cloud and downloads the latest configuration. 
Back in WatchGuard Cloud, after the web setup wizard completes, we can see the device has been added and is already connected. To see more details of a device, we click on the name of the device. At the top, we can see the device information and license details. Furthermore, we can see administrative tasks and we can delve more into the device configuration, which is just a click away. Here we have an overview of all configuration settings. Please excuse not being able to go through all of them, yet we will look at the most important areas. As you might remember, we have only configured the external interface 0 at this point. A click in the networks tile shows us the current two configured networks, for which I want to change the internal network to 10.130.1.1/24 and keep the associated interfaces. On the tab DHCP settings, you would either need to change the address pool to match the configured network or like in my example, disable DHCP. I click on save and as we've made a change, we also see the information at the bottom about undeployed safe changes, which we're going to ignore for now. So let us head back and click on the DNS tile. Here we can see the previous added public DNS server and on the tabs to the right we have the option to configure internal DNS server, so a DNS server for specific domain names and the option to enable DNS watch for this configuration. In our example, we leave all as is and click on cancel. Next we look at the device settings, which again provides the option to change the name of the device, time zone and in addition to view the configured NTP servers. Along with DNS and the time zone, this is important information to be correct. When incorrect, issues arise such as incorrect logs, report timestamps, certificate verifications and so on. Nothing needs to be changed, so we click cancel. The default firewall policies and security services already provide a good starting point, but I'm sure you will soon configure your own policies to better match your requirements. For firewall policies, let us take a quick glance at the outgoing policy, which allows the shown traffic types from any internal to any external and enabled security services. Further details to firewall policies are available in the video on Get Started with Firebox Policies and details to the security services, please check into the WatchGuard Help Center. A bit further down in the device configuration page, we can see the area VPN, so where you're able to configure your branch office VPNs and mobile VPNs, in specific Ike v2 and SSL. Just to let you know, when you click on the icon with a question mark, the help center will show you the information closest to the area where you're at in the WatchGuard Cloud UI. Because we made changes previously, we click on schedule deployment at the bottom of the page. This gives us the option to schedule the deployment for a certain date and time or, as in our example, deploy the changes now and the Firebox downloads the new configuration. Here are some key takeaways. After you have registered the Firebox to your WatchGuard account, first add the device in WatchGuard Cloud, then run the Web Setup Wizard and finally check if the device has connected to WatchGuard Cloud. Next, review the basic settings for the device, such like DNS, NTP and the networks. Verify if you need to configure any additional settings, such like firewall policies, security services and VPNs, or you're good to go with the default setup, but do not forget to deploy the configuration. You can find more details of course in the WatchGuard Help Center, but maybe you're also interested to have a look at the courseware, available in the WatchGuard Learning Center.